Uh, I will talk about the kinetics of polymerization today. Um, so I'm going to just talk about the radical polymerization. Um, I is supposed to be uh, uh, fairly reactive and uh, uh, over here there's an example we can easily break this oxygen oxygen bond to create two radicals denoted by R. And uh, uh, why do we need this R radical? The R radical can react with a monomer to form RM radical. It's called activation. Here's an example. If we have an R radical, and you can imagine this part is just your R radical, react with a ethylene molecule and becomes R with a bond to CH2, CH2, and then the radical is now on C2H4 over here. After activation, we uh, will have this propagation. So uh, the chain of the uh, polymer keeps growing one by one until the termination of the radicals. It's possible to have two radical chains. This one has a length of n monomers. This one has a length of m monomers. And they, these two radicals may react with each other and form a bond in between. And this termination reaction removes two radicals from the reaction system. And how do we deal with this uh, uh, polymerization reaction mechanism. We're focused on the radicals. They are highly unstable. Therefore, we can use the steady state approximation to assume that the concentration of the radicals remains unchanged throughout the reaction. And at first, we look at the initiation step. The radicals are produced and how fast are the uh, radicals are produced? It's Ki times I. That's the reaction rate for the initiation. But one I is converted to two R, so we have to put two here. And also, not all radicals can activate a monomer. Some of the uh, radicals are just annihilated before it can activate a monomer. So usually this efficiency fee is less than one. Okay, this is how fast radicals are produced. In the activation step, radicals are not really produced or annihilated. You have one radical on the left hand side, one radical on the right hand side. Same here in the propagation process. Again, on the left hand side, you have one radical on the right hand side, also have one radical. So again, in the activation step or the propagation step, there is no change in the concentration of the radicals. The radicals are removed only in the termination step. And how fast are those radicals being removed? Again, we don't know the value of n here. We don't know the value of m here, but we don't care. We just use this symbol. We're going to say Rmx. This denotes all radicals. X can be from 0, 1, 2, all the way to infinity. All right? And when we use this, that uh, denotes the concentration of Again, all radicals or radical chains. So this is equal to, again, we are eliminating two radicals at the same time. So don't forget about this two here multiplied by the reaction rate, AT times. Okay, supposedly we need to use this concentration times this concentration, but again, we're using just RMX to denote all possible radical chain length, so squared. 
All right, and why do we do this? This is for us to get the expression for the concentration of the radical change. The concentration of all radical change is equal to Ki times I times uh, this phi efficiency divided by Kt. And then we have this guy. Alright. Now we can derive the so called kinetic chain lens. So what does that mean? Uh, in this step, we produce radicals. They serve as the seeds for the growing polymer chains. So we know how fast the radicals are produced, again seen here. And then we need to know how fast the monomers are consumed. Uh, in the rate of the monomers being consumed divided by the rate of the uh, radicals being produced will give us a rough idea about at any given moment roughly what's the average chain length. So the kinetic polymer chain length is simply again on top, we want to know how fast the monomers are consumed. They are mainly consumed in this step. So I'm going to just use Kp times, this is the uh, radical concentration, but uh, for uh, generality, I'm going to just use x here times m. Again, it's a second order reaction over here. And then divided by how fast the initial radicals are produced from the decomposition of I. Again, we have that expression as, as here, two, Ki, I, We're almost done. This concentration is the concentration of all radical chains. And we have its expression here. So we need to plug in this expression in here. Uh, we'll have to erase some of the derivation to get this kinetic. equal to, again, 2ki times the concentration of i times phi on the bottom. This is how fast the initial radicals, r dot, are produced. And then kp, this part is how fast the monomer is being consumed. It's kp times the concentration of all radical Chains. And we have this expression here, it's Ki times I times Phi on top, Ki times I times Phi on top, K sub T, the reaction rate constant for termination on the bottom to the power of one half times the concentration of M. That's how fast M is consumed over here. Look, this is the monomer, and monomers are consumed in this propagation reaction steps. Okay, we see KII phi here, we see KII phi here. 
However, this is KIIV to the power of half. This is KIIV to the power of one. So KI I on the bottom. And also you have KT here to the power of negative one half. So uh, I forgot to uh, leave some room for some combination. On top, we have KP, we have M. Uh, this is a fairly complicated expression for the kinetic chain lengths. But uh, it tells us that uh, if the propagation reaction rate constant is large, we have a larger chain lengths. If we have a higher concentration of the monomer, we have a longer chain length. And then if we look at this, if we have a, a really fast termination reaction rate, well, we have shorter lengths. If we have a, a really fast rate of pr producing new radicals, we have shorter chain lengths. If we have a higher concentration of I, we have shorter chain lengths. And again, this efficiency um, is uh, how many radicals produced from I can actually activate the polymerization done here.